Hello, Michael Albert here. Um, I'm going to record a video demonstration of how to make a collage out of a cereal box for you. So I hope everybody is looking forward to being creative and making some art right now. Um, this is an example of one of my cereal box collages, the Frosted Flake cereal box. And this is a page in my book, which is called An Artist's America, which you might be able to find at your local library. I would uh, go to their website and go to their catalog and put in the title, An Artist's America, and see if it comes up. And sometimes a library branch might not have it, but it might be in their system and you might be able to get it. Um, and I do suggest checking out my book because it's got some good information about me as an artist and some of the projects I've done. But today I'm gonna show you how to make a collage out of a cereal box. Um, I had recorded a introductory video earlier, which I hope you've had a chance to see where I suggested um, some of the materials you might need to do this project, but I'll tell you again quickly. One is you might, you, you could use a cereal box, that would be ideal, and you know, it could be any kind of cereal box. Cheerios happens to be one of my favorites, but I also have a Honey Nut Cheerio box here, and the partially used, frosted mini wheats box. So you could get yourself a cereal box. If by chance you don't have a cereal box, other types of boxes will work just well, just as well. Uh, some examples would be this Swiss Miss Cocoa box, a pasta box, it's crackers is one of my favorites. And so some sort of a package cardboard box that something that you get at the store comes in would be the first thing to get. The next thing you'll need is a pair of scissors. And these are my scissors. These are grown up scissors, but kids scissors work just as well. And depending on your age and ability, um, you know, or, or whatever scissors you have available, um, just make sure to be super careful with them because scissors are sharp and you know, they're, they're not a toy, they're a tool. Um, the other thing you will need is some glue. Um, regular Elmer's glue works really well. Uh, you can also get the store brand glue. This is a clear kind of a glue that you get at, you know, the, at Staples or a store like that. Um, I actually use this special acid-free glue that's called, uh, the brand is called Linaco, and it's um, for my special masterpieces, I use this special acid-free archival glue. Um, but also a regular glue stick would be fine. And I guess at worst case, if you don't have any glue, um, tape could possibly work, you know, if you have tape. Um, also, if, you're, if you don't have scissors or you're unable to get scissors, you can tear the box by, by hand um, that might be an interesting idea to try, but I think uh, if you can get a pair of scissors, that would be best. Um, finally, uh, for those of you who don't know, a collage is a picture that you make by taking pieces of different materials. Um, sometimes you cut them, other times you just take them and place them together in a, in a sort of a montage. Uh, we're gonna, I'm gonna show you how to cut the cereal box today, but you usually take your pieces or your materials and you glue them down on something which is called the base. And a good a couple of good suggestions for how you might get a base. This is a writing pad, you know, that has pages on it that you write, blank pages. And when you use the last page, there's a leftover piece of cardboard. So if you have a writing pad, um, this would be a perfect type of cardboard base to use, and it's a great size. Another one that I have over here is the back of a drawing pad. This used to have pages for drawing, watercolor pages, I think it was, but the back of a, of a drawing pad also has a nice piece of cardboard you could use. Um, but now I'm gonna 
start. So if you need to, you could pause the video and get those materials and have them ready because I'm going to now show you how to make a cereal box collage. Okay, so I'm going to do a Cheerio box collage. And what I do, what I've done is I've taken an empty Cheerio box. And the first thing I do is I cut the cover off of it. Um, Cause I'm only going to use the cover of the box and you know, take your time in cutting it. I, I prepared my materials a little bit because I didn't want to waste too much time on this video, but I cut the box. I cut the flaps off. You can see the, the bottom flap and the top flap I've cut off because I just want to use the cover of the package. Um, one other suggestion for you, if you don't have a piece of cardboard like I've showed you just before, you can take the back of the box and use the inside of the back of the box to be your base. And I can quickly show you how you can do that. You just cut the flaps off like I had just done. Cutting takes a lot of practice, and I had a lot of practice, so I do it pretty quickly. But so you can see, this is the back of the box, and if you use the inside of the back of the box, this is a perfect size as well. So what I like to do is, I had this idea years ago where I would just take a box that we all know, you know, the Frosted Flakes cereal box is very well known. It's in a, every single grocery store, and I'm sure you've seen one of these. And it's a pretty simple idea, although there's an unlimited amount of ways that you can do it, which to me is very fun and exciting. And with this, I just took the cover of the box and cut it up into a whole bunch of different pieces. And then I mixed the pieces around and put them together in my own way. And that's what I'm suggesting that you do with your box. You know, I'm going to show you a few different ways that you can cut up the box just as suggestions, but really it's up to you to decide how you want to cut the box up, what shape pieces you want to use, and how you want to arrange them. Um, maybe I'll show you a couple of other ones just before I get started. Here's a Cheerio box that I had cut up years ago. This is a poster I made of it. But you could see that for this, I cut out letters from the boxes, from the from this Cheerio box, and I spelled out different messages. Like for example, here it says, be a friend. And here it says, courage and responsibility and different messages like that. Um, the Cheerio, depending on what box you pick, it might have different words and letters on it and you might want to cut out letters and spell things if you want, or you don't have to. Um, this was a Ritz Cracker Box collage and I love this one. I love the colors on it. And one thing that I always do, which I'm going to also show you, is I put my initials M A. Can you see that? M-A. There's also an M-A in the top corner here. Those are my initials for Michael Albert. So one thing I suggest is as a way of signing your work, putting your initials in there somewhere. And that's something you don't have to do, but you might want to give it a try, you know? So once you have the box, and you have your scissors and your glue and your cardboard base, it's gonna be time to cut your box up into pieces. And feel free to take your time because um, art isn't something that needs to be rushed. You know, it's something that you're supposed to enjoy the process and you know, let yourself be creative. And that way you come up with your own ideas 
and you use your materials to come up with something interesting that you've thought of and that you've created. So there's different ways that I cut the box up. Um, one of them is into square shaped pieces and I'm gonna show you how I do that now. So the first thing I do is I'll cut the box into a strip like this. Whoops. So I have a strip. And then I cut the strip into square shaped pieces. You could even make a thinner strip to make smaller squares. See? Another thing you can do is cut the box into a strip again and cut smaller rectangular pieces, see? Well, here's a few of those. Another way I like to cut the box up is into what I call random angles, just random triangular type pieces. And you can just cut the box any way you like and cut it into a lot of random shape pieces. One last thing that I do sometimes is I can cut swirly shapes. So see how I can cut a circle and then kind of cut around and around. This takes some practice, but you could try to do it if you want. Then I cut another swirl really close. Now this isn't easy, but you know, you guys, practice makes perfect. And I'm sure you can give it a try and see, see how you do it. The other thing about this is that you could come up with your own unique shapes. But here you could see I cut out another little uh, swirly shape and now I have two. And those look kind of look cool sometimes. Um, and then finally, to, to cut out my initials, sometimes I cut out the letter in the shape of my initials. So here I cut out a, a square and I'm going to make an M. And I have done this quite a bit, so I'm pretty good at it. But the other thing that you can do is, let's say you wanted to make a J. Right? Let's say your name started with a J. You could cut a piece like this, and then on the, on the back of it, write a J, and then cut around that to form your letter. So that's another way to try it. Um, I actually, to recap, I had done this before just to show you some examples of the shaped pieces that you could use. So here, these are the little random angle pieces, just triangles and pointy little pieces of all shapes and sizes. Then over here are some of the square shape pieces that I cut out. Over here are some of these strips type pieces where I cut it into a strip and then into thinner slivers. And then down here, whoops, is an MA that I cut out of the box. And sometimes you can um, find the letters on the box. These orange pieces came from this box I showed before. Let's see, where is it? This frosted mini wheats box. You can see I cut out the M and the A to um, have my MA from letters that already appeared on the box. And the idea would be to just fill the entire cardboard base with pieces arranged any way you like. So that's the first project for you. Um, I 
hope you have fun doing it. Um, don't get frustrated, you know, it takes practice to be able to cut. And when you glue things down, um, be very careful. I always put glue on each piece here. I'll show you quickly a little demonstration about the glue. So here's a triangular piece that I just cut. And I'm gonna use this clear glue from Staples. I just put a little bit of the glue on the piece. I always use my finger and spread the glue around. I don't wanna to have too much glue or too little because then it won't stick. And then I take it and I place it where I want it to be and press it down and hold it for a second. And there it is. So I never just put lots of glue on the board and stick pieces into it because that gets very gooey. It doesn't dry fast and it makes a mess and it wastes glue. So try to put glue even on the small pieces, a little dab and use your finger or the edge of the bottle you can to kind of spread the glue around and then place the piece where you want it to be and hold it down. And um, I hope you enjoy doing this project. Um, maybe you could take pictures of your finished project and send it to your librarian um, or teacher. And um, the most important thing is to have fun doing it, okay? So thanks so much for listening to me and have fun, be creative and take care. All right, I'll catch you soon. I'm gonna record a couple of other videos. And if you like doing this project, maybe you'll wanna try another one of these projects as well. Okay, signing off, Michael Albert in New York. Goodbye. I gotta get out of this. <laughs>